Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 930, 930. And the topic today is about um, being swayed by other people's opinions and um, egos. E yeah, we're going to talk about egos today. And this comes from a conversation last night, but I'll explain all that before I, but before I do that. <laughs> sorry, before I explain all that, I'll try speaking English first, and I'm going to introduce myself and explain why I do this, and um, give us more information, tell you where to find the replays, I'll tell you about that as well, and also maybe you give me some invitations as well. So, hi, my name is Barry Selby, welcome to my broadcast, this is my daily chat. Um, getting a water, let me start again. Barry Selby, yeah. <laughs> I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, I usually know what I'm talking about too. Um, love and relationships expert and author of the best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I recommend the, the, the book highly because it is great actually it's a good holiday gift i didn't think about it. it's a good holiday gift this time of year so i recommend you get the book i'll put a link in the comments at the back end so you can get that as well there'll be some other links coming up i think as well um i help women create balance in love life and business because i'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine which is what informed my work and also started these talks three years plus about a week ago hang on <coughs> excuse me dry throat today um and they were started then and have become the talks called messages for the masculine inspiring your feminine heart so today we're episode number 930 and the topic today is are you swayed by other people's egos and you may be surprised you may be surprised how much more that's happening to you than you think Ooh, getting too nervous i may be um as i said at the beginning this is actually from a conversation that conversation i heard actually overheard and then joined in last night with a good friend of mine gail and a friend, new friend last night whose name escapes me at the moment it'll come back to me um they were talking about how there were these people in their lives who want to run the show and get things done and didn't listen to reason and that's part of the, what's going to happen here so and by the way we'll jump in this is a facebook live that i do every day at 5 p.m civic time i'll give you information at the back end about when you find the replays how you can get inv involved and also i'm going to tell you about my um my new decade approach that's coming up shortly um it's called bff and i'll tell you more about that in a moment if you haven't seen my previous broadcast in the last four or five days, this will be a surprise for you. <laughs> and if you have, it might be one too. All right, let's jump in. So all this preamble. So, are there people in your life that what they say goes and you have no choice in what they say? That's one part. Especially with our parents, that often happened until we, until we either rebelled or we left. Which is sometimes the same thing. Secondly, um, are you aware of people in your life who you would rather not um, create any ripples with? So you let them have their way just because it's easier that way. Now, it's, two it's the same thing but different things. So I'm talking about one that's much more um, demonstrative and ego-driven, and one's more like you just decide you want to just let things be. So that's two ways to play with this, and they're extremes in a way because one's like reaction to, one's preemptive avoidance so they're sort of in a way opposites but anyway so breaking that's way too much so simply put are you in a place where in your life you don't find yourself able to air your own views speak your mind as you choose to and be comfortable with whatever's going on because for many people i'm aware of and i've been through it myself more than once where speaking up speaking out speaking my own viewpoint was often shut down in fact and i'm still getting better at this i have a, i've had a habit of speaking very very quickly i'm better now if you may be surprised to hear but i certainly did um speak a lot faster up until only a few years ago which i found out when i did some inner some inner um excavation so to speak into my own history i realized that when i was a lot younger and, and i've said before in my talks and you, if you watch my broadcast you know this i was bullied in high school and it's one of the part of the journey i had but one of the things that came out of that was that whenever I was in conversation, I would attempt to squeeze in what I had to say in a very short burst of words because I was afraid of getting hit, beaten up, or judged badly. So I would condense what I was going to say, almost like a, a, a data burst in a computer, um, to get my thought out there, which, of course, being said so as quickly, nobody would understand <laughs> or take it seriously. So it was really ineffective. But I was simply in a place where I was afraid to voice my opinion for the fear of getting beaten up worse than I already was. So that was one of my experiences. You may have your own ones. And in fact, I'm pretty sure we all have, to a varying degree, a 
background or experiences of things where we felt we couldn't express ourselves fully. And in fact, we were swayed by the, what other people said. So in fact, not so much we wouldn't speak our mind, but if they said something, we'd go along with it. Even if it opposed our real innate instincts and view ourselves. Just reflecting on some memories myself, because that's, that's something I had to really work through myself, and I don't think I'm the only one on this one, where I had to really get clear about saying no was okay. And for the ladies especially, I know that's a big topic nowadays about saying no is enough. There's no explanation needed, no defense needed. It's just saying no is enough. So I, I understand you totally on that one. Um, but more than that, it's the subtle levels I'm going to talk about now. Because yes, there's the blatant stuff that's like really clear when you look at it and go, oh my God, I realize now how much I was letting myself be guided or overridden, or accurately, overridden by the people. Find yourself trapped in situations you don't want to be in. But on the subtler levels, where you... Well, <laughs> let's play with some politics, shall we? <laughs> are you noticing that your opinions are swayed by what posts you see on social media? Are you aware of how your, your perspective, your judgment, your response is actually governed by what you read in the newspaper, listen to on the radio, or watch on the TV? So it's not just about family dynamics in your own family or people you work for or work with that, that impact you. It's everything in life that portrays something to you that you either take in blindly perhaps and let yourself be controlled by it or you look at and go let me consider that because what I'm really attempting to influence this conversation with yes influence I'm doing the same thing to you in a way is to take your power back to really step into your own awareness authority and autonomy <clears throat> excuse me again so that when you do respond to things versus react again respond react two different things something I'll be teaching in my course You'll find yourself in a place where you have more governance, more ownership, and more freedom to say no to things you don't want to say yes to. And that sounds so simple, saying no to things you don't want to say yes to. But how many times in your life, and you can look back and probably count on at least two hands, times that you said yes to something you didn't want to say yes to. When your true instinct, your true gut um, desire was to say no and step back. I'm inviting you to look at the possibility where you can say no anytime you wanted whether it's career, relationship, home life, family, politics, anything. You have the freedom to say no to whatever doesn't work for you. And say yes to things that do. So it's not just one thing only. It's about saying yes to things you do want to do. Because the opposite side of that is true as well. Meaning that there may be circumstances, situations where in the past you would say no to things because that's what you felt was safe to do. Whereas now you're going to say, you know what? I'm saying yes to that. In fact, yesterday, in yesterday's broadcast, I was talking about comfort zones. And about how we portray us, and that, that reminds me, thank you. I need, you need something in my memory to remem remember something I need to put into, yeah, okay, sorry. Sidebar, I'll get to that in a second later on. I love the way the spirit comes around and gives, gives me a smack upside the head to remind me of something. <laughs> so yesterday's broadcast, I was talking about the comfort zone. Now, beyond the comfort zone is the magic zone versus the uncomfortable zone, which some people assume, if you're not in the comfort zone, you must be uncomfortable. I disagree with that. I believe outside the comfort zone is where magic happens. And when you start to look at that place beyond the comfort zone with wonder and possibility, wonderful things happen. So in that context, there are things you may have said no to because it felt like you had to stay safe inside your comfort zone. It starts to tie together nicely. Hmm, I love that. So I broke down to comfort zones more, in more detail in yesterday's broadcast, talking about flow and other pieces of how to really get where you want to go. In this context, it's the same thing, really is that there's the temptation, there's the um, uncertainty, perhaps, of saying yes to things you don't know about necessarily. So you stay safe and say no because people convinced you, or still convince you, that it's not safe to do what you want to do. So you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hide out. I'm going to, going to step back. I'm going to avoid it. Well, what if, what if, using yesterday's teaching as I put into this one, that if you did in fact say yes to something that was outside your comfort zone by a mile, you might find yourself better off than you could have, been, could have thought you could have been on. Even better off than you thought you could have been. Sorry, I had too many words in there. <laughs> by having a choice point to decide what you want to do, by understanding that you can possibly have um, incredible results because you said yes to things you didn't even know was possible yet, but you trust yourself enough because this is a self-trust journey, largely, to say yes to something that people would say you should have said no to that. To go against the norm, that's one of my bad habits. <laughs> Not so bad, just a habit I've got. 
is something I do. Well, I work. Hi, Patrick. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for joining me. Um, and so understanding that you have the freedom to choose, to choose for yourself, to really have your own self-governance. Yeah, it's better than self-centeredness. Self-governance sounds better. To choose for what you want. Even saying yes to things that are so far outside the realm of your previous experience that most people look at you as being crazy. Now, having said that, <laughs> I'm not advising you to get really, really crazy. I'm advising you to do things with some deference and some understanding, but also with a sense of... Um, I want to say intuition is the way I was going to say it, but more than that, it's an innate feeling. We, we are all created with the gift of having gut instincts. Although many of us have learned to disavow them or to ignore them and listen to other people's egos, back to the title again. However, when we start to trust that innate wisdom that's in our gut, because to be, to be transparent, in, in research has been done, our gut um, nervous system actually has got, many, has got brain cells similar to what's in our brain, and our heart and gut have more impact energetically than our brain does. So stick that in your pipe and smoke it. But what I'm going to speak to, though, is that in this idea of understanding we can trust our gut, when we do, then that leap of faith into the unknown I was talking about before, leaving, leaping into the magic realm, stepping outside your comfort zone, becomes a whole lot easier because you know intuitively it's safe or not. And if it's not, don't do it, just to be clear. I'm not saying jump in blindly every time. But your ability to choose comes from a much deeper place when it's from within you, when you then lift when you let yourself get swayed by the egos outside of you. And yes, I understand in some situations where maybe you're in a job where the boss is like always being bullied, bullying you and everything else, you might feel like you have no choice. I disagree with that. Respect is something I think we all need more of in our lives from ourselves, especially in the mirror. And when someone's when we put ourselves down to sacrifice because of somebody else's ego on top of that, that's a huge disrespect to ourselves. So, and I don't necessarily got to go back and bully the other person back, but I'm speaking to the fact that you have the ability to stand, stand in your space and say, no, that's not appropriate. Now, every situation is different, so I'm not saying this is a standard answer, but to have the understanding, you have the freedom to choose that from your own place, from your own willingness, but also from your own self-respect. When you come from that place of self-respect, and that's the thing I talk about a lot in this journey, about having a real understanding that when you come from your self-respect, again, gut instincts, heart support, all these different pieces are where your self, um, not self-guided is the wrong word, what's the word for? Um, self-source, that's the word I'm looking for. When you're feeling self-sourced from inside, then those egos out there have less control. Now, some of them may have logistical control over your life, like if you're a kid with a parent, but you still stand in your own space and, and, and own your own space from a respectable place. Again, I talk about self-respect. That also implies respecting other people when they, um, hmm. sometimes when they don't even do it, when they don't even respect you. But having respect for yourself and other people is, is actually a game changer for some people. So having the ability and the freedom to choose for yourself to say, you know, this lines up for me and I want to do this, or this doesn't line up for me and I don't want to do this, is a choice point you need to take back if you're not doing it for yourself. Self-respect is a fundamental skill that a lot of us have forgotten. I did for quite a long time. But nowadays I'm much better at saying, you know, if this works or it doesn't work. Saying yes to certain things, saying no to other things. It's part of that internal guidance system to re-navigate really so you find yourself into balance with who you are. You come back to presence with who you are. You come back to trusting who you are. And that's why it's important, I believe, as I've said in all my talks, to really start to love yourself and appreciate yourself and stand in your own two feet energetically so that you're no longer in a codependent relationship with anything or anybody else out there. Codependency I've talked about many times, and I've said this very clearly, that I'm adamant that I'm looking to eliminate codependency off the planet. This is a big part of that. When you start to learn not to be swayed by other people's egos, and you own your own space in your life and your own guidance comes from within, you become free. You become open to possibility, and you become self-reliant. And for a lot of people in this world, self-reliance is a new skill. I understand that. So this is my encouragement to you to take this on for yourself, to find the way to understand that what's possible for you is much more than you ever thought. And that what other people would say to you may not be in your best interest. And even if you can't necessarily leave the situation, you can override internally their voices with your own voice. If they start to denigrate you or say things about you that aren't positive or aren't supportive, you can simply say to yourself, inside, inside of you, you can simply say this to yourself clearly, what they think of me is none of my business. What they say about me is not true for me. What they may be saying is actually their projection and their false belief 
I know better. That can all happen internally. What's there even, you know, almost like yelling at you, but being negative towards you? There's freedom in this place because you're taking back your ownership of your own space. That's the first step. There's a lot more to it than that, which is why I've been talking about this for a few days now. This is, this is actually, the, it's not part four officially, but it does follow on from the previous three days broadcast I just talked about with, um, with balance, freedom, and flow. Hey, Phoenix, nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, so this is, in a way, a seed I've been planting for a while now. And, and thanks for all the love, Phoenix. I love all the hearts popping up on the screen. <laughs> Sweet. So this is an invitation I'm putting out that I'm, I'm still finish, finishing up the website. I'm, oh, excuse me, the web page. It's, the information's there. It's just not as pretty as I want it to be. And I'm going to add something else that I talked about earlier into that um, description. But this is basically leading into my, my BFF, course, BFF masterclass I'm launching in January. And I'm inviting those, if you're watching this and you're interested, checking it out. It's, it's generally for women, but men can join in too if they really want to do the work. Um, but women are more, ten, more, more um, what's we're looking for? proactive in that area just to be true I mean I'm a guy so I know I'm speaking against myself but that's what I'm aware of so it's open to anybody this call starts in January I'm, I'll give the link I'll put the link in the page in the bottom of the page knowing that the web page is not complete yet but the PayPal links are in there and I've got three of um, tiers of, of registration depending on when you sign up as soon as you sign up the cheaper it gets that's the way of putting it so um, that's called it's called BFF which is balance freedom and flow also discovering your own best your best friend forever is yourself I'm going to keep bringing it back to you and saying, look in the mirror and see who your best friend is. That's who it is in the mirror. So this course is designed for you if you want to really go deep in diving into this work. It's a three-month journey with me and some very cool people. And that link will be in the comments and check it out. Um, secondly, because I did mention this earlier, I did say self-love is a key. It's a good time to start looking how to practice self-love to come back to yourself and support yourself. So I put self-love link in the comments too, my self-love meditation, two audio tracks and a written guidebook to give you guidance in the area. And I mentioned at the beginning, because it is that time of year, a good, good thing for the holidays is a book. I've got a great book for that called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book I wrote a few years ago, but it's still available. So link will be in the comments for the book so you can buy that for your uh, family and friends for Christmas. Um, you should see better get it by Christmas, depends on, well, oh, hang on. Let me be transparent. Print it, be, be yes. I know exactly Phoenix, yeah, self-love is totally overlooked these days, which is why it's part of my work and why I'm recommending it in, in this video to do, practice yourself, looking in the mirror, loving yourself, and that's what I, my self-love meditation will help you with. Um, back to the book, I'm realizing because it's Christmas is only a week away, only a week away, oh my God. So I suspect getting my book before Christmas may be challenging. The link will be in the comments anyway if you want to get it. You can get it by January at least. Um, <laughs> but I was thinking, Print and, ship, print and ship in a week, that's a bit tight, so it may not happen. So I'm gonna put that link in the comments. Um, but again, so my BFF um, invitation will be in the comments, self-love meditation and the book will be in the comments for you to check out and have a look at and, and choose whichever fits for you. And I'm gonna invite you to look at your own life, particularly around your relationships, around your family, around your work and around your um, social environments. Where is it that you let other people's egos run the show? And where is it you said, you know what, I'm taking charge of myself. Even your spiritual teachers and personal growth teachers, just be aware of how they add to your life versus they take control of your life. There's a whole other conversation about cults in there, which I won't get into in this conversation. That's a whole other topic. Um, so that's for you to play with as your own homework. Yes, I give homework once in a while. Um, but also I'll let you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on here on Facebook. You can find me at Barry Selby on Facebook and you can follow me here and join me at 5 p.m. 5 p.m. every day. Um, the replays go to my business page on Facebook and also onto my YouTube channel. So my business page on Facebook is barryselby.author. You can subscribe to my, my, excuse me, you can like my page and check out the broadcast there. Um, although to be honest, Facebook is not really good at keeping all of them there, which is one reason I'm glad I backed them up to YouTube. So you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry, excuse me, is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. And you can watch through all the titles from newest to oldest. All the keywords are there, the, um, the titles are there, and you can do that. Um, you can find whichever one you look for. Oh, binge watch all of them if you feel so addicted to my message. <laughs> Not requiring you to do that, just be clear. Um, so that's about it. This, this ego stuff is interesting. And to not be controlled by other people's egos is a big shift. I do recommend you check out my BFF course. It's gonna be a magical ride for three months. You're gonna love being there. and It'll be fun to ride, have you with me. Um, and again, link me in the comments. 
as always. This my encouragement to you is always take care of yourself. That's why I keep saying at the end of the broadcast, please take care of yourself. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. So take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye.